I made this. Um, welcome to Manning's Meatloaf, by the way, episode sixteen. Uh, my name is Stephen. His name is Mike. I um, I tweeted about this. Uh, our producer Jonah uh, also has a, a second job. His day job is being my son. And I tweeted about this. I uh, I really like that song, um, Cherry Pie, by Warrant. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I and, remember this um, tweet. I mean, uh, I didn't. I didn't think you didn't hear anything. I was. I no, made. I made a tweet about. You can follow me at SJ McClure, by the way. I love that. I'm super insecure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Would you care to share how you use that to teach euphemism or not? No, I'm happy to. I said, listen, uh, here's the deal. That song is about sex. Right. Uh, and I said, you know, euphemism is. Um, like, you know, and growing up in a Christian home and church, you might have been to this too. In my youth group, we had a lot of talks about euphemisms for like expletives, right? Okay. It's like how holy crap was it not any better than the alternative. And so you might as well just go ahead and say you it. You might as well go ahead and say it. Here before though, we've been um, a, PG, uh, a G show, so I won't, or yeah. PG, I guess, so yeah. I won't go any further. But a euphemism could be, you know, anytime you use a word to replace another word, yeah. another idea. So in that song, obviously, cherry pie is euphemistic. Yeah. Um, but Sometimes <laughs> euphemisms can be clever. I mean, I think that's where they're, they're best used, when they're it's a clever way of talking. Maybe that's why I like that song so much, because it's so clever. I mean, it's... <laughs> oh, man. I mean, it's clever in a tacky way. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> clever than most not clever. You, what's it, can you think of it on the top of your head? What's a clever euphemism? A clever you show, yeah. euphemism? I, nothing comes to mind straight away just because I haven't really been thinking about it. No, I'll think about it, though. I'll think, think about it the, during the show. I'll give you a euphemism. All that was to say, though, clever. that I have had... I have had 80s uh, hair metal on the brain for the past few weeks. I okay. love, I just love the stuff. I um, can't get enough. So anyway. What, uh, like, so what have you been listening to? So. What you exposed him to? What else, what else have I had? Let's see. I, on my brain, I've been thinking about, like, White Lion and uh, going even further back, Kansas. They're not hair metal. I know. Relax. But Kansas. Yeah. Uh, I've seen my Cinderella today. Do you consider um, Van Halen hair metal? It depends. Uh, they fit the bill in some ways. They, I mean, David Lee Roth and Sammy Hagar did have the hair, right? However, generally speaking, that term I would say is used to describe a certain strata of musical ability, too. By that I mean to say, oh, there it is again. If you keep the score at home, that's one. By that I mean to say, um, you know, bands like. Faster Pussycat, Enough's Enough, you know, all these groups that you don't, right. where are they now, right? But Van Halen, they're another level. Yeah, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I, mean, no, I think I think they were. So I don't think they that had I would. more credibility. I thought. Yeah, I don't than, ultimately think that yeah. I would because I would not. Pu- I would not talk about the birds and the bees. There's a creative euphemism. Yes, that is good. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that is good. Which, by the way, if you're at home and don't know. It's also euphemism for sex. Right. So explaining um, sex. I, I would venture to say that many of the best euphemisms probably are for sex. Things that or yeah, we don't want to just talk about. Procreation, openly. right. right, right yeah. sure, sure, sure. Or things that are maybe kind of crude. Oh, yeah, totally. There's lots of, you know. Right. For bodily functions. And right. <laughs> totally, yeah. Anyway. Anyway, I would, not, I would not put Def Leppard and Van Halen in the same category, for example. I love Def Leppard. Pour some sugar on me, Armageddon. I love all that stuff. But Van Halen, somewhere else, head of the class, right? Mm-hmm. All right. So let's segue. Do you watch? Are you watching this season, American Idol? No. Have you ever? Yes, we did. Do, we watched it for a while. Um, maybe we didn't watch the first. I didn't watch the first one with uh, Kelly Clarkson. Clarkson, my favorite American Idol, by the way. So I didn't. I'm not into the. You know, Clarkson mania or whatever. I like Kelly Clarkson um, a lot. I think we watched the next one. Is that the one with like uh, Ruben Stoddard, Ruben Clay, Ruben. Clay Aiken? That's right. And that's the one where really both of them won. Are you claymate? No. Is that what they call his fans? No, or I just make I, that up. No. <laughs> Do they call him claymate? Hold on. But uh, pardon me just a moment. Go ahead. Kathy with Kathy Griffin is that her name or Griffith? Griffin. Kathy Griffin, Griffin, the redheaded. She calls him Clay Gakin. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
Uh, <laughs> that's not even a euphemism. Just play on words. That's all you um, we watched it for a while, and then we stopped watching it. Um, Paula always anno- uh, annoyed me. And then um, we stopped watching it when si- Simon left. We watched one more season, I think. Sure. Right? Steven Tyler. Oh, yeah. Randy, Jennifer Lopez. Jay Lowe. And right. we, that was the last one. We At did that not. Point, we were done. No, totally. We, we did done. not watch that season for that reason. I'm not a fan of Jennifer Lopez at all. I said it. I'll say it again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I do like Steven Tyler, all right. I like Aerosmith. But yeah, we stopped watching it for that reason. And then I was intrigued by Keith Urban and Nicki Minaj. I like Steven Tyler of Aerosmith. I don't like Steven Tyler of American Idol. Nice. I mean, I just just didn't care for it. it. I didn't didn't like the interactions. And I felt a little bit sad for Randy. It was like, I don't. He's like 13. You're still there. (laughs) Like everybody else has moved on. But what else is he going to do? No, he's good. So we started watching uh, Simon Cowell on X X Factor. And. I like it. I think I like it better. We like it all right. It's just, to me, it's the same as it's it's just taken. They have a better the stage. place of American Idol. Yeah, they don't have a better host, mm. Ryan Seacrest. No, last year it was um, he's top notch. Was Ryan it Mario Seacrest. Lopez and a Kardashian? Listen, that, that was awful. That was really bad. That was painful to yeah. watch. Yeah, I have a theory that uh, Lopez, Mario Lopez, hates. That Kardashian girl. <laughs> Which one? Is it, is it Chloe? I don't. Yes. Yeah. I don't. I think it's her. Right. But I have, I have a theory that like secretly he hates her, or backstage. He you hates feel like her. it comes through a little bit. I think so. I don't it. think he likes. I think he's better than her. He thinks that. Yeah. Sure. And he kind of is I think both a little kind of, bit. Well, but I don't I mean, know. Six one half doesn't have another. I mean, <laughs> I mean, kind of go either way. He did do Saved by the Bell. And then he did. What? I don't know. X Factor. Right. But what else? What has she done? She's a Kardashian. A reality show, right? <laughs> Which brings me to my question. Hit me. Uh, how much reality TV do you watch? So you watch American Idol. Now, the McClure's or me personally? Either one. Well, I, I won't say how much reality TV the McClure's watch because that would incriminate members of my family. Oh. I won't, I won't do that. Well, just speak for yourself. I'm going to make a little list here of the shows that you watch. Okay, so I watch American Idol. All right, let's put that down there. Right? I watch The Dog Whisperer. Is that reality TV? Yeah, it's because it's not it's not scripted, right? Yeah. Um, Jonah, help me. I noticed here. that because I heard you doing a little thing with your dog. <laughs> yeah, I was in Walmart the other day, and I almost did it to a person. I accidentally I've done it to Sam before. My son by accident. Oh, I think that's totally fair. <laughs> He was like, Damn. it works for everybody involved, though. He's like, Dad, I'm not Charlie. That's like, <laughs> my schnauzer's name is Charlie. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But yeah, I was thinking to myself, maybe I should not. Give this lady in the customer service area <laughs> the little claw. He's still in the, the cashier. I don't think it's... <laughs> don't ring it up yet. Yep. Call it assertive. So, okay, so Dog Whisperer, American Idol. Yeah. What else? Um, you watch... Uh, Charlie Rose. That's not reality TV. <laughs> that's a, like a, no, that's an a, interview. Yeah, that's an interview. I don't, I don't watch a ton of TV. Okay. You watch um, that dancing show. Oh, DWTS. Yeah, Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. That. Dancing with... The stars, the yeah. Stars. I do like that. Never I, watched it. I like that against, uh, begrudgingly, I like that show. I can't, I can't stop. I really like Tom Bergeron. He's the host. I really like him. I think he and I would be friends. Is he the life. same guy who does the uh, funniest videos? Funny videos? That's right. Yeah, I'm not doing that. No, I like him a lot. Um, I can't watch dancing shows. What's My fair. wife watches So You Think You Can Dance. Oh, I don't watch that. I, I, I've realized, and this is... I, I've often thought of myself like as an artsy person. Like I enjoy art. I really, especially love like visual art. Right. But I'm not. I don't think because I don't really care for dancing. Right. I don't. I don't always get it. Like when I'm watching them dance, I cannot always tell which ones are good, and which ones are just making up junk. On the show that Angela watches. Yes. Right. Because on the ballroom, you can tell. When dancing sure. with stars, you can tell. I probably could tell you there's a misstep or they kind of trip. Right. But like some like the modern dance, whatever, I'm just like, oh, that's <laughs> that's ridiculous. And they're like crying. The judges are crying. It was so beautiful. Oh, I guess you're so- yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, really? Because the last guy, you like cursed him out because right. of how awful he was. And he, you no, know. I've never, I've never been into that. So, yeah, I don't watch that. She watches it. I think I might be done. Reality show wise. You don't want, you want to like Top Chef? No. I think I watch a lot of them. I think I watch a lot of reality TV. Do you? Top Chef. I okay. watch as well. One. Uh, Chopped. Okay. I used to watch Iron Chef. We don't watch it as much. I will, if I come across it late at night, I'll watch I always root for Bobby yeah. Flay. Does, uh, I like Bobby Flay. Does Diners, Drive-Ins, and Die, is that reality? Kind of. Kind I don't of. It's watch. non-scripted. No, I don't think it's reality. It's, it's not, not really, like uh, if you don't follow yeah, there's something. No, like, there's no competition. There's yeah. no... 
Uh, we watch, and I'm going to take a little heat for this, but I'm not ashamed okay, so to we're, say we're it. We're at two or three so far. Go ahead. I watch Project Runway. Oh, we used to watch that. Yeah. yeah. Make it work. I like Michael Kors. Yeah, and I like him like too. Yeah. Yeah. We watched it. I don't know why, but we watch it. And that doesn't bother me. No, I think it's a good show. No reason it should bother you. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, there were some people I've, I've had conversations where they felt like I should have a, you know, a hole punched to my man card because I watched no, the show. No, no, no. But I'm That's, okay with it. So people, be it. Punch away. small minds. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, three, four. Three or four. I mean, does Dog Whisperer count as a reality show? Probably not. I mean, it's not. Like, <laughs> because reality shows do follow the same group of individuals. There's like some type of competition. Through the course of some. Right. Some, right. Yeah. No. We used, I mean, over the years, I've watched more. We, we used, used to watch to, Survivor, but I don't we, watch that We never anymore. did. We used to watch that show, The Mole. Remember that? I never watched it. Um, we used to watch Project Runway. Um, yeah, but never watched Big Brother. No. What was um, – oh, this uh, – what was the the model um, – Next America's Next Top Model? Oh, I didn't see that one. The girls used to watch like – that over yeah. and over and over, I'd, I'd kind of peek in just because you get hooked on the drama, right? Right. That's, <laughs> That's the whole point, isn't it? Back in the day, you used to watch Real World and Road Rules, MTV Road Rules. Uh, see, I never, I, I've seen like Real World, but I never watched it because uh, I didn't. This is, I never grew up with MTV. I we did. didn't. My, we did not have cable in my house. Uh, okay. We had just the regular network channels. So it wasn't until I went to college. I had friends that had cable. I watched at their house, that kind of stuff, but. Uh, just, just never, you know, got into it really because of that. Um, I'm missing another show. No, that you watch now or that you used to watch. No, I think that I watch now, but I can't think of what it is. I can't know. I, I don't, we don't watch a ton of TV. Um, I mean, I watch a lot of stay. I watch friends. We record those and I watch those. There are some shows. There's a show on FX called Archer, which I love. It's animated. What was the one about the stand up comedians? I used to watch that one. You watched that one? Oh, Last Comic Standing. Last Comic we Standing. Used to, yeah, we watched that a couple I times. I, yeah. Jay Moore is so annoying. Yeah. But I liked the idea of the show. I love comedy. Stand there was uh, one of the seasons, uh, Daryl from The Office was the host. That was a little oh, bit better. Oh, yeah. And do that. you remember when it started, Bill Bellamy was the host. Yeah. yeah. Remember yeah. Bill Bellamy from MTV? Yeah. So, yeah, so a little bit here and there, not too much. Um, so, question to pose, right? I'm curious, like, if, why, why are we fascinated with reality TV? And my other, my other question I'm curious about is, do you think reality TV is a fad? Like, will we watch reality TV in 20 years? Let me think. Or that. is it similar to, like, the old variety show right? that you really don't even see anymore? But that was, like, all the rage. Yeah. Everybody, every star, celebrity had some kind of a variety show. And now nobody has them. Let me think on it. Think about it. For 10 seconds. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to answer your question. What was the question again? Uh, you asked me about reality TV. Yeah, do you think it's a fad or will we wa be watching reality TV in 20 years? I think we'll be watching some form of it. Okay. Uh, I, what came to mind was the law of diminishing return. Yeah. I think that by the, in 20 years, reality TV will be um, more extreme, more <sighs> invasive. Someone will probably die. Like the Japanese – style sure yeah yeah yeah, 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 for sure or you know like um at, you know those movies that came out the truman show ed tv those things oh yeah you know i think it'll it'll take on a um a more prominent place in people's lives in terms of like how intrusive it really is we think it's intrusive now but i think it could become even yeah. more so but people sign up for it that's kind totally. of totally yeah, absolutely that's yeah, always yeah, yeah. the defense well they they signed up for it. they got paid to do it well yeah it's like <laughs> Excuse would me. you? Would you? Because I could, I could. <laughs> part of me could see you doing this, but you're. I mean, you're a very uh, private person in some ways. Yes. But I could see you allowing a film crew just oh, to follow you around, absolutely, for like six months. Listen, if this if this podcast makes its way before the ears of someone who can make this happen, I Mark will Burnett, do it. Mark Burnett. Yeah, he's a Christian. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> like a Tim Tebow Christian. Uh, yeah, I say so. Okay. Anyway, um, I'll totally do it. You're right. It's interesting because I am a bit reclusive. Mm -hmm. However, um, I always tell Lori that I, I do believe I'm built for fame. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Because here's the thing. Here's what I always say to her. And I'm being serious when I say this. 
being famous is not as hard as famous people make it. Okay. Just be nice. Right? That's all it is. Just be nice. Remember, do you ever watch Roadhouse, that movie with Patrick Swayze? No, I've never seen it. <laughs> it's horrible, but I love it. <laughs> so he's a bouncer. Okay. And I think his first rule is be nice. Right? Imagine how much easier the world would be. This goes back to our last episode, even. If we were all just a wee bit nicer. Life lessons from Roadhouse. That's right. Be nice. But no, yeah, I think I would love to have a film. I would. Yeah. yeah. And what's funny is... Based on what I've seen of reality TV today, I think I'd make an okay show. <laughs> I think folks would watch. I'm, it's a pretty boring life I lead, but I think folks would watch. I'd be like a side character, right? Because they'd be here filming while we're doing oh, yeah, the totally. podcast. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And they occasionally would do like an interview with me. That's right. To ask questions. And we would pixelate questions. random parts of your body to make it seem like. <laughs> oh, thanks. To make it seem like something was going on when it wasn't. I'd be the one that they just, they, uh, they bleep out. Like various things, <laughs> even right. though I'm not, I don't curse. It would just be uh, like, they film you, know. you in shadow and lower your voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, uh, that is funny you said because I would, I would love to be. I think of, I'll, I'm going to name two that I hate. I want you to think of two reality shows that you think do a disservice to mankind. To human, one. one came to mind right away. I almost said to mankind. I'm going to say humanity. Yeah. Uh, one of them, The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. Uh oh. Oh, I didn't mention that one. We do watch that one. I, I hate I know, that show. I know, I know. I agree with you, and I still watch it. I mean, okay. I have okay because I, you're right. I can see the point. I have a you know a daughter and a son, right? Both of the age to understand what's going on. I think to myself, this is not right. the world. I want them to. This is not real. Yeah, you I continue don't continue to, to teach really still now. Watching. Who's yeah. yellow? So I'll tie with you on that one. I mean, I agree with you. That's okay. my one, and then keeping up with the Kardashians. Um. Oh, That's I sat there and watched that. It just looks excessive. Everything about it looks gratuitous. I found out that someone in my family allowed my daughter to watch that show. I was like, <laughs> watched it with her, and I was not thrilled. I won't say who it was because uh, I don't want to. It was your son, wasn't it? No, <laughs> no, I don't think no, just ever watched yeah. it. Yeah, but that's just, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, dance moms. Oh gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that just think, seems wrong on yeah. like. Multiple things. You know what? I mean, you know what show that Abigail wanted to watch and we stopped letting her. And I don't want to get into a bunch of stuff, but that um, Joe, what's that with the wee little people? Not those little people. <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> little kids in the uh, pageants. The wee people? No, little the little girls in the pageants. Uh, ba- oh, toddlers and tiaras. Toddlers and tiaras. Sorry, that was a hard time coming. It's a show on TLC about like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five, six, it's seven, eight, nine-year-olds. Similar nine to Dance Moms. But is there dwarfism, dwarfism no, involved? No, I'm having little people like... Oh, okay, right. I gotcha. This is really good. This sounds... It's very similar to the Dance Moms kind of thing, right? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, talk about objectifying... Right, people. exactly, right. Yeah, that was... Uh, Abigail used to watch it, and um, I was not very happy uh, that she did, so... We no longer watch that show. And yeah. I don't, I don't want to say, listen, if you... If your children are involved in pageants, I'm not judging. Just, I don't want to watch... I might it. judge a little bit. <laughs> no, I, mean, I, I don't have any experience with that. But it, it was just a lot to watch. I don't know. I don't, I don't know any. I don't really have much experience. We didn't do it in our family. I don't know. Pop culture segue. Great movie based on okay. uh, pageants for younger people. Little Miss Sunshine. Oh, yeah. A really good movie. With Michael Scott. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was when he was still, Steve Carell was still doing The Office. That's right. Oh, yeah, for sure. He yeah. was still doing it. And uh, are you still watching The Office? No. I'm, I've, I've stayed true. Have you really? Yeah, I, I mean, I I do not feel a loyalty to television shows like I used to. Like, I've, I've given up on certain shows. But Grey's Anatomy, loyal. I'm out. I understand. I but, pieced out but a you're long loyal time to ago. The Office. Though. I've stuck it out with The Office. And I think this last season is funnier. Really? The seasons without Michael Scott, they there was a struggle. There were times it was kind of like... I understand. The laughs, especially when I watch it after watching the, 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 the day after watching Modern Family. Right. Where I'm guffaw laughing. Right, right. And then I'm watching it, I'm kind of like, eh, mm-hmm, okay. Sure. I kinda, but this season, I think it's funny. I mean, I think it's got some good stuff to it. I'm looking forward. I mean, this in a positive way. I'm looking forward to the finale. Right. Like, I think they're setting things this up. This is the farewell season. This is right? it. This is the finale. Now, I don't follow, so don't, don't go over my head, but do you – how do you think it's going to end? Is Jim going to take over? No. Okay. Is he going to leave? You know. I like Jim, so that's all I care about. I don't know. Okay. I really don't know. I mean, that's why I'm looking forward to the finale. I'm not Good sure if you. they'll move to Philadelphia or not, but. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Put on your serious hat. You ready? 
Yes, I'm always serious. I need a few minutes with uh, Counselor Mike. Oh, man. You ready? Sure. So, as you know, and as our audience, uh, our ever-growing audience of roughly 13 humans knows. We uh, have 57 likes on Facebook. Shut your mouth. We do, don't we? Thank you, world. If we get to 100 likes on Facebook, something pretty crazy is going to happen on the podcast. (laughs) Let me just say that. I can't... Uh. I can't say what it is, but my sources tell me it will be a bit wacky. Speaking of reality TV, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, we, as everybody knows, we both were in the ministry, et cetera, et cetera. Um, since we left the ministry, we being my family, uh, we've been to a few churches here where we live, uh, mm-hmm. the town we live in. Uh, we've been in Cleveland for, this will be our fifth year. Can you believe that? And in that time, we've attended a couple churches with, with regularity. Um, but starting about maybe a year ago, maybe less than a year, mm-hmm. we stopped going to church, the church we were going to. Uh, we recognize, obviously, everybody calm down. We recognize the new community. <laughs> We've read the book of Hebrews. We get it. Uh, um, looking at churches and stuff. I want to ask you this question. Okay. <clears throat> How important to you is it to be able to agree with mm. – or let me ask it this way. Do you have a percentage of things um, that, a, that a particular, whether it be a denomination or even just a local community, do you, do you need to agree with this mu- this amount of the things they teach or hold to? For yeah. you to feel comfortable. Do you understand what I'm getting yeah. at? It's, yeah. I, I, for some reason, I'm having trouble giving it a voice. I know what you mean. I think, I mean, in some ways, I want to separate it that there are some things, like there are uh, like doctrinal issues. And then there are issues of practice. Okay, let me stop you there and put a put a face on that. Okay. So I do not believe in – we've had this conversation. So I don't have the conversation. I should use that as an example. Okay. I don't believe in the teaching of what people in Pentecostal circles refer to as uh, the initial evidence. Okay. Right. Do we need to unpack a lot of that? that I don't think it would take too long to That speaking in tongues right is now. initial evidence of baptism of the Holy Spirit. I don't – I would not agree with that. Okay. So based on what you're about to say, yeah. would that preclude me from attending a church of God? I don't think it has to, no. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. I mean, I wouldn't – if I was a pastor of a church of God, I would not want that to be the only thing that kept someone from coming to my church. Okay. Right? Hey, if you have an issue with that, don't let it stop you. Please come and be a part of what we're doing. Because the, the thinking being not that you know that I'm we're going to change it to accommodate you, right. but you never know sure. what's going to happen. Sure. And I think there's room to discuss that issue. At least in my view, I think there's room to discuss that. You know, I would want to, I would probably discuss, well, how do you feel about spiritual gifts in general? How do you feel about right. the Holy Spirit's role in your life and those kind of things? So I think there's a way that you could still be a part of the church. Now, different churches are set up differently and there may be like, you know, certain leadership positions they may not allow you to gotcha. assume. Okay. If that's a huge, you know, thing that you have to be on the pastor's council, then maybe that some churches, you know, wouldn't allow that. So that's one issue. Right. But is there is there a threshold at which you say, you know what? There should be some commonality. Maybe you're not a good fit. Yeah. I think it, so, is, but is that too? But I think you have to look. I mean, churches are so different. Even like in in one denomination, I mean, churches are different from church to church. Sure. So it's hard to know. You know, I think you have to almost kind of see what's the context of that church. Right. So you use the Church of God. A Church of God in South Georgia probably looks quite different than a church in downtown Chicago. Okay. Sure. Right. Or a church right. plant in Nashville. Right. Right. I mean, these things are going to look different. So I don't know that you can like broad stroke all churches in a denomination by that. I think you go try it out and see, you know, you look and see what the community looks like. You know, what are the other values? Because again, because there, there are doctrinal things that I think you generally want to kind of hold true, but hopefully the, the essentials are there. The okay. Fundamentals. Which right? is, which is interesting because that then brings up the question of what are the, what are the essentials? essentials right. And that may right. just depend. I mean, you could, I guess you have like the five fundamentals, whatever they look at, but, right. and then beyond that, you might look at, well, how are these things practiced? Yes. Right. And that, that can be a big thing as well because, you know, you might, um, perhaps for one church, their view of the Holy Spirit is an essential, right? Okay. Sure. Well, how is that practiced? What does that look like in your church? If that's an essential. And I think the two churches that both hold um, to a certain you know view of the Holy Spirit's work in our life can still practice that in far vastly different ways. Different ways. Sure, sure. So that can even make a big difference. That you may say, well, I have issue with this, but th- their practice is still kind of in line with 
my own practice. So to that point, obviously being a minister in a Pentecostal denomination for many years, I, uh, whether wittingly or not, bore witness to the fact that you can worship alongside individuals who think differently than you do on theological issues. Right. Because I've held this, I've held this view for many right. years. I didn't, you know. I and I think there's something too about um, attending a church that may challenge you in some ways. Sure. They may have some things that are a little bit different in, in, in teaching or in practice. Not huge things, right? Like they, they deny divinity of Christ. Right. Well, we'll give them a chance, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there could be certain things where um, the idea of iron sharpening iron. Sure. And again, not in an arguing way or where everything is, you know, uh, being challenged or combative, but in a way that says, let's just see what this looks like in this community. So let's shift gears, though. You answer this as much or as little as you want to. Okay. What if the concerns are of a more social nature? But I didn't mean to say, oh, there's number two for this episode. But I didn't mean to say. Is that uh, catchphrase? I said it twice. Yeah, it's, that's a horrible catchphrase if it is. <laughs> that's the worst catchphrase I don't think I ever. Have a catchphrase yet. Are you having a laugh? Anyway, um, I guess folks might might sort of umbrella some of these issues as like social justice, but that sounds too, that makes me sound too good. I don't, I'm not, I'm not quite so holy, <laughs> but yeah. just issues of a social nature. Uh -huh. uh, do, should those have any bearing? And here's what I mean to say. Let's say, and I'll talk about it, all eyes on me right now. Sure. Right? So our context might be described as right leaning. Would that right. be fair? Kind of a conservative environment. Yeah. Let's say a person found themselves a little bit lefter than right. Yeah. Lefter of center. Yeah. Lefter is not actually word kids. Lefter. Left of center. Should that matter? More left of. Well, obviously, like if you're trying to go to, is it Westboro Baptist? Right. Right. <laughs> that might be a big concern. <laughs> right. right? You, know, you find yourself as a centrist or maybe even left of center. Sure. Probably not a good place to land because that's a huge part of that community is being really active in social issues and stamping out, you know, whatever they perceive as. But um, let me shift in another direction before yeah? you answer that. Or issues of personal holiness. Let's say, for example, mm -hmm. a person um, exercises Christian liberties in uh, any number of areas, whether it be drinking or whatever. Reality television. Reality television, right? <laughs> Should though, I mean, tell you, know, give me the big. What do you think? I'm not. I'm not going to do whatever you say. Relax. You're not. You know. Don't don't feel any pressure that you're guiding. I don't my feel life. any pressure because you don't <laughs> listen to anything I say anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but what is your take? You on will do what you want, regardless. <laughs> What's uh, your take? What do you think? It's, it's hard to – I mean, I think you have to kind of look at certain things. Sure. I mean, it's hard. But let, for instance, let's take television, right? Because okay. I've known like people, Christians who uh, you know have a thing against watching television. Right. Seriously. They are, or they don't see any good of it. We might as well just go ahead and get rid of the television. Or maybe even like the types of shows that you watch or types of things that you allow your kids to watch, right? And again, I, I mean, I think that we are generally – you know, based on the, the kinds of shows that my son's friends are watching – I find out that we're actually pretty conservative totally. on certain things. Absolutely, yeah. sure. That's a good point. But obviously, we let him watch other things that some people would find just reprehensible that right. we do that, you know? And that's something where you could, that could be an issue. I mean, in some churches, that may be like a major issue where they have right. a litmus test. You know, how do you feel about Harry Potter? How do you feel about right. this and sure. that and whatever? And if that's what they're using, like when you walk in the door to kind that of determine, that, that might tell you this may not be a good fit because that's not. You know, our concern. Yeah, and I thought, even as I was asking you at the start of this little bit of conversation, I thought, you know what? The answer might be more nuanced than either one of us can really. Yeah. Uh, I will say this, though, that uh, we have a church we're going to give, a, we're going to go to this Sunday. Uh oh. Uh oh, Skedios. That's right. Um, anyway, listen, join the conversation if you want, folks. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, visit us. On Twitter at Manhands Podcast, Facebook.com, Manhands and Meatloaf. I want to thank uh, our producer, Jonah, as always, a stalwart uh, part of our team. My name is Steven. His name is Mike. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.